Hi everyone, this is Khan Deng here, and today we're going to talk about Flea, one of the films in the 13th EU Human Rights Film Days program. And we have a very special guest, as you can see, the director of the film, Jonas Borre Rasmussen, with us. Hey Jonas, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you for being with us today. So, uh, Flea is an animated documentary about a man who's telling his life story including his escape from a, from his uh, home country, Afghanistan, to Denmark as a refugee. It's actually a true story about your friend. And how did you come up with the idea of telling his story as a film? Um, you know, it really comes from, you know, me being curious about how and why he had come. I met Amin when I was 15 years old, so that's a long time ago. Uh, and already back then, when he showed up in my little hometown, I was curious about how and why he'd come, um, but he didn't want to talk about it. And I, of course, respected that. Um, but this story, you know, kind of became this kind of black box in between us, this thing that we couldn't really talk about and that kept the distance between us. Um, and then years passed and I started working in radio and I asked him if he would share his story with me as a radio documentary. And he said that he knew that he would have to share his story at a certain point, but he didn't quite feel ready yet. But when he would be ready, he would love to share it with me. And then years passed, and I was invited to this workshop in Denmark called AniDocs, where they invite animators and documentary filmmakers to develop ideas for animated documentaries. And they asked me if I had an idea. And I immediately thought about a min story um, and asked him again if he would share his story. And then I would turn it into an animated documentary. And he finally said uh, yes. Uh, and also because he could be anonymous behind the animation. The fact that he didn't have to be public with the story because you know what you hear in the film what you see is his real voice telling the story for the very first time and he could tell it to me because we've known each other for more than 20 years but he didn't feel like being public about the story he didn't want it to be a part of his public story uh, and something that people would want to talk about when they met him you know at parties or in the supermarket or wherever okay but uh, was it always clear from the beginning of the project that uh, it would be an animated film how did you decide on that? No, it, it was it was clear from the beginning. Um, you know, um, when you work with documentaries, and especially with documentary films that takes place in the past, you always kind of struggle with like, how do you make the past come back alive? Mm -hmm. And I thought by using animation, we would be able to kind of recreate, you know, a Min's childhood home and Afghanistan in the 80s and Moscow in the 90s and these things that he experienced on his on his flight. Um, but also, of course, because of the anonymity um, and also because, you know, um, this is really about Amin's life trauma uh, and things that he has really time, he has really hard time sometimes uh, talking about it. Um, and here animation is, uh, is a beautiful tool to kind of show Amin's inner life. So when he is talking about his, his trauma, things he has a hard time talking about. We could really use the animation as a creative tool to show his inner feelings, you know, his yeah, his yeah. anger, his his fear, uh, his sadness. Uh, some things that sometimes are hard to vocabulize. You could use the animation to to show it instead. Yeah, sure. So I was going to ask you about the you know challenges and opportunities of telling this story through an animated film, but I guess these are the opportunities some yeah. part of it so what was the challenges of the animated uh animation film making an animation film of this story well the, i think the main challenge was um to make people understand that this could be done you know a lot of people thought okay animation it's it's such a heavy work it's so expensive yeah. to do animation and you know uh we don't have a lot of money when working in, in documentaries um so making people understand that this actually could be done and actually this was the only way to do it and it makes sense to do it, that was really complicated. It took a long time. We spent years and years trying to finance the film and we got a lot of no's in the beginning. And then luckily, slowly people started to see, okay, but maybe this can be done and maybe animation is the right way and maybe the only way to tell the story. Um, but I think convincing people that this could be done was really, really complicated. Yeah. The fact that, but, you know, it is the the fact that people have to know this is a true story and animation is a kind of a, kind of a blockage for a, for that step, but I can understand that. So, of course, this is a personal story. It's a life story. 
But with the Folie, which is a film premiered and awarded in Sundance and had three Oscar nominations, it is now a very well-known worldwide story. So after this international success, I, ha I want to ask you, what do you think about the role of the film on current refugee situation in the world? Or uh, what does it say to you? What's the importance of the film to you? Not just as a filmmaker, you know? I, I think I think the importance of a film like Mince, and I think the animation actually helped to do that, is to kind of make these kind of stories universal instead of personal. Um, that because you don't have a person in his flesh, but it's a, it's an animated character, you know, it could basically be, be anyone. Uh, but also because this, you know, I didn't have the idea to do. I want to do a, a refugee story, and then went out and found a refugee. This story is from the inside of a friendship. So Amin is not just identified by being a refugee, he's identified by being a human being and with you know all the different kind of complex uh, feelings and emotions and wants and needs that a human being has. Um, and I think to show the human aspect of being a refugee and making the story universal, you know, if you cut everything aside, you know, being a refugee is really about losing your home and looking for a new place to call home. And I think that's something that everyone can relate to. And not just people who have tried to flee, but people in general understands the, the, the importance of having a home where you feel you can be safe and you feel you can be who you are with everything that entails. I think this is one of the most powerful sides of the film, because we can see, I mean, as a human being at first, and not just an, a, a refugee. This is one of the most powerful things about the film, I think. Um, so how did your friend, uh, of course, we know him in the name of Amin. Uh, how did your friend feel about the film when he saw it? It must be very special for him. It was, and I, you know, I, I remember the first time we saw it together, um, I, I brought it to his place. Um, and we sat down and watched the film together. And then, you know, there was the credits afterwards and we just sat in silence for a little bit. And then he looked at me and he said, um, I don't know if it's a good film or not. And he <laughs> said, because, because he was he was very moved by it, but he said, because it was, his own, it was his own story on screen, he had a hard time to figure out whether he got moved because it was his story on screen or because of the filmmaking. Um, and I think he was a little concerned whether people would be able to relate to his story uh, because he is kind of double marginalized, you know, both being a refugee and being gay. Yeah. Um, and he was concerned that people wouldn't be able to understand. Um, so for him to see the journey the film took afterwards, uh, to see people being able to relate all over the world has been really, really uh, uh, rewarding to him. And I think for him also to be able to share his story because for him growing up, he didn't have a lot of stories where he felt he could, you know, mirror himself in. So for him to have a story where he felt like, okay, but this is my kind of story. And to be able to share that with the world. And so the millions of people who have similar stories have something, some stories they can relate to is uh, hugely important to him. Sure. So I think uh, before we finish, I would like to ask you uh, which projects you are currently working on, because, you know, how did Philly affect your career? Is it easier to make a film after that huge success? It it is actually, of course, a lot easier to 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 get financing now for my for my new projects. Sure. But you know, it's still hard work to make a film. Uh, so it does <laughs> it does become easier to make a film. Of course, the financing is easier, but to actually make the film is still a lot of hard work. But it's of course, it's challenging. It's challenging. Uh, but I'm actually working on a project right now, um, which is is. A, it's, it's based on these Danish graphic novels. Um, so it's kind of, oh. I, I stay in the same kind of realm. Uh, so it's going to be animation again. And this it's based on a true story about a guy who actually uh, immigrated from Turkey uh, back oh. in the 70s, came to Denmark from Turkey in the 70s. Oh, I'd love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think, it, is it soon? To release date but mm -hmm. you're on the, working on it well we just, we're working, I'm, I'm i'm writing and we're doing like you're writing that yeah yeah so, so we have to wait you'll have to wait hopefully we'll <laughs> start production 
end of next year and then probably like a release into sometime sometime to 2025 i hope it sounds so exciting yeah. so so thank you uh thank you so much for being with us today uh i hope the turkish audience would like to see your great film flea again in here 13th uh, eu human rights film days here so thank you very much for joining us have a good day you too